Hello everybody, today we'll talk about time and frequency resolution. So microphones and accelerometers are the sensors which capture sound and vibration as analog signals. So these analog signals are discretized or broken down by the computer into small samples called digital signals. So on the left you see an analog signal and literally an analog signal is like infinite points, is made up of an infinite points. But the, the digitization process, the computer breaks down the signal into finite number of points, and then the end result is you get a digital signal. So let's talk about time and frequency domain. Time domain represents how a signal changes with respect to time. So on the left, you see an example of time domain. Basically, the x-axis is the time, and the y-axis represents how the signal is changing with respect to x-axis, which is time. And frequency domain on the right represents how much of the signal lies within the particular band of frequencies. So you can think of frequency domain as having the x-axis as frequency. Basically, frequency domain tells you what is the signal made up of. For example, in this example, on the left we have a 500 hertz sine wave in the time domain, and the frequency domain reflects it exactly by showing a line you know, at, at 500 hertz. So frequency domain tells us what is the signal made up of. So what is time resolution? And let's talk about many other terms involved in time resolution. Now, when you capture sound or vibration, it is stored in the time domain. And sampling rate is a digital signal processing or a DSP term that can assist in proper acquisition of data in the time domain. Sampling rate is nothing but the number of data samples or data points acquired per second. So let's say, for example, if you're acquiring 10 data points per second, then your sampling rate is 10 10 samples per second or 10 hertz. So the unit of sampling rate is per second or hertz, and sampling rate is also referred to as sampling frequency. Now, when you have a large sampling rate or a large sampling frequency, it implies that you have very high time resolution, whereas a small sampling rate implies low time resolution. So sampling rate is directly related to time resolution. It's just that how many points you have per second. So if you have very high sampling rate, the density you know, in the time is more, so the time resolution is more, and vice versa. If you have a low sampling rate, it means low time resolution. So what are the, t uh, there are different terms in time resolution. So let's say we have an analog signal captured for one second. We have to digitize it. So these circles represent points, you know, uh, on the analog signal that we are trying to digitize. So a delta t is the time between those two points. I mean, in the picture, it may look like the points are not equidistant, but they are. So it's same, delta t, same everywhere. And the inverse of delta t is a sampling rate. It can be denoted by fs. The total number of data points is a block size n, and the total time to acquire one block of data is the acquisition time. So the, the relation between all three is t is n times delta t, or n is t times fs. So fs is a sampling rate multiplied by the total acquisition time gives you the block size n. So here's an example of you know different sampling rates. So let's say we have the analog signal on the left. We're trying to digitize it with 9 hertz sampling rate, meaning we're acquiring 9 data points per second. So there are literally 9 of these small blue circles on this picture. And then we get the digital signal by reconstructing it. So we're connecting those dots to recreate the signal, you know, as, a, as in a digital signal. So as you see here, you know, on the extreme left, we have the analog, and on the extreme right, we have the digital. The digital signal is not an exact carbon copy of this analog signal, because here the sampling rate is very low. But let's say if we increase the sampling rate to, for example, 13 hertz. So there are 13 circles here. So now you can see that it, it's getting better, although it's not accurate, but it's better than 9 hertz. And let's say if we further increase it to 17 hertz, now we can see that it's quite better, you know, at capturing the analog signal. So what is the importance of sampling rate? Well, sampling rate is important to capture the signal as accurately as possible. So if you have very low sampling rate, as we saw in the example 9 hertz sampling rate, it does not capture the signal correctly. It neither captures the waveform nor the amplitude. So we need a good sampling rate that will capture the signal waveform and the amplitude. Now a very high sampling rate will do a great job in capturing the signal as accurately as possible, but then you know, on the flip side it results in large time data files. And if you have a large time data file, it takes a lot of time to process and it has a computational cost. So the key thing to remember is you need to have a good sampling rate. So what is a preferred sampling rate? 
To capture the signal as accurately as possible, it is important to sample at least two times faster than the frequency of interest, highest frequency of interest. Real life signals can comprise of multiple frequencies. So let's say, for example, we have a frequency limit of 5 kilohertz. Then we need to sample at a frequency of 10 kilohertz so as to acquire or capture all the signals within the 5 kilohertz accurately as possible. Now let's talk about the frequency resolution. What is bandwidth? Bandwidth is the maximum frequency that can be analyzed. Bandwidth is half of sampling frequency, or in other words, sampling frequency is twice the bandwidth. Now, this relation is called as a Nyquist criterion. You know, but due to anti-aliasing filters, we cannot say that the sampling frequency is twice the bandwidth. It should be 2.5 times the bandwidth. If you want to learn more why is that, you can check the link in the description below. For example, if the frequency of the maximum frequency of interest is 10 kilohertz, then we have to apply a sampling frequency of 25 kilohertz. So it might seem contradictory as you saw here, but then you know this is because of the anti-aliasing filter that we need to multiply by 2.5. So in acoustics, when we are dealing with frequencies from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sampling frequency of 48 kilohertz is very common. So what are spectral lines? Spectral lines are the total number of frequency domain data points. So there are two data values at each spectral line. So you have an amplitude and a phase value. So what is frequency resolution? Frequency resolution is the spacing between data points in the frequency domain. It's similar to time resolution. Only the difference is you're in the frequency domain and you're, it, it, you're capturing the, you know, the spacing between two data points. So it is given by an equation which is bandwidth over spectral lines. Now, for a given bandwidth, if you have really large number of spectral lines, you know, I mean, the denominator is increasing, so it means that the you know spacing between frequency data points is lesser, and it means that the frequency resolution is finer. I mean, if the denominator goes up, you know, the delta f should be lesser, and you know, the frequency resolution is finer. On the contrary, if the denominator is very small, meaning few number of spectral lines, which means greater the sp spacing between data points. This would result in a coarse frequency resolution. So here's an example of coarse frequency resolution. As you can see here, there are the red circles represent the data points, and delta f is a distance between those data points. So as you can see here, it's spread out. You know, the density is very less. Delta f is high, and you get a coarse frequency resolution. But in this case, there are more points, and you know, delta f is smaller, the density is more, and you get a finer frequency resolution. So let's, you know, let's analyze a, s a signal with low and high frequency resolution. This is my own recording, my own whistle. You can listen to it. All right, so now let's analyze with low and high frequency resolution. So on the left, you have spectrum size is 502 two hertz. And on the right, you have 4096 hertz. Now, both of these are accurate, but the only difference is that the right one, you know, clearly pinpoints what frequency is present exactly, you know, like a single line, whereas on the left side, you get like little coarse. So let's derive the relation between time and frequency. From time, frequ time resolution, we have the equation time is nothing but block size over sampling frequency, or the inverse is sampling frequency over block size. From frequency resolution, we have delta F is bandwidth over spectral lines, or 0.5 times sampling frequency over half of the block size. And if you draw the relation between T and delta F, we get delta F is one over T or T is one over delta F. This is a very important relation. So this is the time frequency equation, delta F is one over T. So if you want a very fine frequency resolution, so the acquisition time should be very high, which means if T is very high, the denominator is very high, and delta F would be smaller, which means the frequency resolution is very fine. Now, in contrast, if the acquisition time is very less, then the denominator is very less, and delta F will be higher, which means it's a coarse frequency resolution. Now, if you want to increase the frequency resolution, the only way is to acquire longer data and time and not you know increasing the time resolution if you increase time resolution it will not increase frequency resolution now we'll look at this with several examples so let's say in the first example we will study the effect of only increasing the sampling rate or increasing the time resolution whereas the acquisition time is constant at one second now in this case we have two cases here and i'll show you that if you increase the time resolution it will not change the frequency resolution so let's say the case one, we're acquiring data with 
2500 sampling rate or you know that is a time resolution and which means that the frequency of interest is only up to 1000 hertz because of the nyquist criteria and the time domain we have fs is 2500 that we have set t is one second we have set it so we multiply we get 2500 data points in one second and the frequency domain we have the spectral lines is half of n which is one to five zero data points in the entire spectrum and the frequency resolution is bandwidth over sl and if you do the computation you get the frequency resolution of one hertz so we get a frequency resolution of one hertz and one two five zero data points now what we do is in the next case we're going to increase the sampling rate or we're going to increase the time resolution so our frequency range of interest is still up to thousand hertz but we have increased the sampling rate 10 times so in the previous case we have 2500 hertz in this case we have 25000 hertz let's see what happens so fs is 25000 t is still one second so we have 25000 data points in one second as in time resolution and in the frequency domain the spectral lines is half of 25000 so 12500 data points and delta f the frequency resolution is still one hertz it's just 12500 by 12500 so we still get a frequency resolution of one hertz we only get more data points. So it might sound like we're getting something better, but it's not because you're increasing the time resolution. It only increases the number of frequency data points, but it does not change the frequency resolution. Think of it this way. You have more frequency data points, but then the distance between those two points is still the same. But that's what defines the frequency resolution. So the frequency resolution or the distance between the two data points is still one hertz, despite me increasing the time resolution. So it proves that if you want to increase the frequency resolution, you sh you know, increasing time resolution is not going to do anything. You have to increase the acquisition time. So let's look at that case. So in this case, we're going to study only by increasing the acquisition time, whereas we're going to keep the time resolution constant at 2500 hertz. So let's get the case one is like we are acquiring the data for one second. Frequency range of interest is still 1000 hertz. So we have FS is 2500 data point, you know, data points in one second. Spectral lines is half of that, 1250, and frequency resolution is 1 hertz. So this is as expected. We're, we haven't done anything here. You know, it's the same thing. But in the next case, what we're going to do is we're going to increase the acquisition time to 2 second. The frequency, you know, the time resolution is still the same. Our frequency range of interest is still the same. We have only increased the acquisition time. So we get totally 5,000 data points in 2 second. We ca calculate the spectral line. We get you know half of five thousand, which is two thousand five hundred, and the frequency resolution is one two five zero by two thousand five hundred, which is 0.5 hertz. That's great. So we're getting a frequency resolution of 0.5 hertz and two thousand five hundred frequency data points. So indeed, we acquired the data for one extra second, and we're getting a good frequency resolution of 0.5 hertz as compared to the previous case. We got a frequency resolution of only one hertz. So indeed. You know, I didn't even change the time resolution. I only increased the acquisition time and it ended up giving me a good frequency resolution. So thus it's proved that if you want to have a finer frequency resolution, the only way to go is to increase the acquisition time. So to conclude, sampling rate or time resolution is the number of data points acquired per second. Frequency resolution is the spacing between the data points in the frequency domain. The time frequency equation is delta F equals one over T. And if you want to increase the frequency resolution, the only way is to acquire, you know, more data point, more data. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day ahead.